It's only fitting that I should talk about a Ford truck while wearing a Toyota themed hat. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a quick look at the new Axial 55 Ford F100 4x4 SCX10 II. This is a new SCX10 II variant from Axial and it's a pretty interesting truck. And I have to say when I first saw the F100 in the press release photos, I was like, oh no, that is hideous. But in real life, it's actually a pretty decent looking truck. Their proportions are pretty accurate to the real thing. And despite what you might think is a little bit out of proportion height, it actually is like this in real life. I implore you to go check out Google and get a good couple of images of a 55 Ford and you'll see that the cab is quite high, just like this truck is. Before we get into the mechanics of the F100, I really do wanna talk about this new body kit. This is a 1955 Ford F100. In real life, this was actually a two-wheel drive truck uh, but there are a couple of conversions out there to four-wheel drive and even crawlers so I guess that was the inspiration for this truck I think they've done a very nice job of molding this body it has a lot of curves um, there are some really nice molded plastic pieces the grill is all separate molded chrome uh, looks really great that V8 symbol on the front is really cool uh, there is a whole grill behind it as well. One thing you will notice straight away is that there are no body clips. This is using Axial's new hinge system so the body clips are actually hidden underneath and closer to the actual frame rails. So there's nothing impeding that beautiful body. It's all just one big solid piece of Lexan, which is really great. The windows do look like they're just a sticker, but they actually are just a really heavy tint. So they are clear. You could add an interior later on if that was something that you wanted to do. The front bumper is new. Uh, this is a uh, kind of honcho inspired in, in my mind. There is a nice metal skid plate on there. There are LEDs included, but they're only running these two fog lights up at the front for now. I'm sure that you could switch those out to the body, uh, but then of course when you hinge the body off, uh, your uh, LEDs are gonna get in the way and that's probably why they ended up doing it this way. Moving along to the side of the body, these are new plastic molded sliders that do include a metal uh, sort of uh, skid plate on there, which is really a nice little detail. It's not functional in any way. It's not gonna help you slide over obstacles any better, but it does add to the rigidity of those sliders. And I actually really like the design of that. I think that's gonna be a nice, uh, piece maybe to use as an upgrade for other trucks later on. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. This body does come in two color variations, the green that I have here and a uh, tan, orange, yellow, brown, uh, more race inspired looking truck, and uh, they both look pretty good. I think I prefer the green one actually. There is a new plastic molded cage here, uh, sort of a pre-runner style cage, which is really kind of a cool look to this truck. There's a lot of nice molded Lexan pieces there. Gives you plenty of room to add some of your own accessories. Uh, there's a nice spare tire included as well. I think it really adds nicely to the overall look of the truck. One nice bonus to this body is that these rear fenders can be removed, revealing a flat aluminum style Lexan plate underneath. So you can run it in more of a pre-runner style or maybe even just to help aid in articulation when you're crawling this truck. I think that's a nice bonus and it's a really cool little attention to detail to show that Axial is really thinking about their customer. That rear cage also integrates a plastic bumper that I think might actually give you a few Sarka points if you were looking to comp something like this body. Axial included the Maxxis Trepidor license tire. These are a 4.5 inch 1.9 tire and they're glued to a method chrome wheel. Ultimately, it's a nice looking truck. It's a very big body, um, but I don't feel like it's any heavier than most of their other bodies. It probably will be a little more top heavy uh, just because of the nature of the F100, but ultimately I think it looks pretty good. Without spending a lot of time on the mechanical details of this truck, it is very similar to the 2017 JKU SCX10 II that came out a couple years back with a couple of welcome changes, and I'll get into those in a minute. I did a review on that JK a couple years back, and I'll be sure to put a link right up there so you can check it out. The gears in this three gear style transmission are all metal, and that is a big bonus. Some of the RTRs from Axial in the past have come with plastic gears in the transmission, and those are definitely gonna strip out. 
uh, in not much time, really. So it's great to see all three gears metal. Uh, it's a nice little upgrade and it's great to see on this truck. There is a metal servo horn included and I believe that's the first of Axial's RTRs to include that. It's a really nice welcome change as well. The links are all metal. They are the non-tapered version so they're not the kit style uh, link but these are perfectly acceptable and will hold up to a ton of abuse. Front axles do include universals so that's also a nice upgrade. Uh, usually something you don't see in the RTRs except a, a select few so it's really nice to see that and not dog bones, especially at the price point that the F100 is. The one-piece axle design is a carryover from many other SCX-102 RTRs. To be totally honest, a lot of people complain about the one-piece. I really haven't had any trouble with it, and I think they work perfectly fine. If you are looking to upgrade down the road, Axial does offer the multi-piece axle kit, and of course there's tons of aftermarket upgrades if you're looking to go for something with a little more strength. The shocks are unfortunately Axial's plastic bodied shock. Uh, most people will tend to upgrade those in the future anyway. Uh, it would have been great to see the metal bodied ones, but uh, you know what? I'm not really surprised to see the plastic ones included. This is the third time that Axial has included all Spectrum electronics in their vehicle. It's the first time I think I've seen a Spectrum servo included in uh, a, an RTR from Axial. This is an S605 servo, which offers 161 ounce inches of torque and is completely waterproof. The ESC is an AE5L which has the pigtails for LED lights included and that's also waterproof and can handle up to a 12 turn motor. They have included a 35 turn brushed motor that should offer plenty of torque for trailing and off-road crawling. Uh, one final note about that ESC, this is one of the first times I've seen an ESC include an IC3 connector, and that is Spectrum's new smart technology connector. Uh, the ESC itself is not smart compatible, but I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of this smart technology making its way into all of Axial's trucks. The radio is the more basic Spectrum STX2, uh, not a lot of frills, uh, pretty decent feel in the hand but honestly it is their more budget friendly bottom of the barrel style radio they do include a spectrum srx 200 receiver and unfortunately that receiver is not dsmr compatible so you can't just bind and drive with say uh, a dx5c for example you even have a switch to kind of go between 50 75 and 100 percent of throttle so if you're a beginner or you're starting out in this hobby uh, this is sort of to give you an opportunity to not smash it into rocks Axial also includes a few extra trees that have a couple of accessories, uh, bull horns and uh, rod ends on there. So if uh, you do break something, there are some replacement parts. There's also some very specific replacement parts. It looks like some body clip options, some lighting options, and some drivetrain options. They do include a plastic servo horn in there as well and an Axial compatible bumper mount. So there are a few things in there if you decide that you wanna change up the look of the truck. And this is one of the first times that there's been no trail markers included. I do get a T-wrench, uh, which is handy, of course, if you don't have 400 of these already. Uh, but yeah, no trail markers. That's, uh, that's interesting. I hope that that's just a fluke and that those green trail markers are going to come back. Because I like them. If you're a hardcore Ford enthusiast, you're new to the hobby, you do want an Axial SCX-10 II as your starting platform, I think the Ford F100 is an excellent choice to start with. Its competitors are going to be a little bit less money, but I do think that there is a lot of detail work here that you can't get from those competitors, so it might be something to look at. So that's my quick look at the new Axial SCX-10 II 55 Ford F100. Don't forget to check out our merch. There is a banner down below where you can buy all kinds of SBG branded merchandise. And I would suggest this time of year is a good time to pick up a hoodie or two. It's getting cold and getting harder for me to do my outdoor running videos. It happens every year and we definitely tend to go into hibernation mode and do a lot more building in the workshop. So there'll be a lot more videos to come. Hope that you will stick around. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.